Welcome to Scottish Golf's presentation on the 2019 Rules of Golf. Before we start, I would like to thank you for taking the time to attend and give the person hosting the opportunity to go through some important housekeeping points, including location of the nearest fire exit and muster point, and if any drills are planned, locations of toilets, as well as asking if all phones could be turned to silent. The presentation should last approximately two hours, and we would normally recommend incorporating a short break. So without further ado, let's get started. The first section is the committee checklist and we'll go over committee responsibilities and outline any changes you should be taking into consideration. The section section will give you an overview of the principal changes in the 2019 Rules of Golf, which come into effect on the 1st of January 2019 with a view to you taking this information back to your home club and presenting it to your members. This section of the presentation is intended to give you, the committee, an overview of the key ch changes to the rules and how these may impact your preparations for competitions in 2019. Additionally, we would recommend all committee members Take the time to read the Committee Procedures section of the Official Guide to the Rules of Golf and visit the Committee Toolkit, both of which can be found online now at www.randa.org, as well as visit or read the Advice to Committees on the Impact of the 2019 Rules of Golf on the Congo website. So, in this section is Who is the Committee? Course Marking Terms of the competition, local rules, pace of play, code of conduct, and finally, Congo considerations. So, who is the committee? Firstly, it is important to be aware that the committee is considered to be the person or group in charge of the competition or the course. It is important committee members are identified and made aware of their responsibilities. They should also be identified to players, either for example on local rules or the club notice board. A few things worth considering. Who do you want to give authority to make decisions? Do you want to give the pro and or potentially the club manager the authority to make decisions on rules? If not, the likes of the pro or the club manager isn't part of the organising committee and therefore should they make any mistake in a ruling then that counts for nothing, i.e. It's no different to having asked another competitor or the club steward for their opinion on a ruling. So definitely think about who are the most appropriate people to give authority to and make sure your main members know who these people are. Next is course marking and marking penalty areas. It has always been fundamentally important from a rules perspective that the committee accurately define and mark their golf course and with the new rules nothing has changed although there are a few changes which committees will need to be aware of especially in relation to what were previously known as water hazards. Here we have our first key terminology change. Water hazards will now be yellow penalty areas. Lateral water hazards will now be red penalty areas. While there is nothing in the 2019 rules or committee procedures that mean a committee has to make changes in relation to course marking, there are several changes which affect how a committee may mark their golf course. It's those changes that we will focus on in this section, especially relating to existing penalty areas, new penalty areas and no play zones. First, existing penalty areas. From 2019, there is no longer the option for a player to drop on the opposite margin, and so there is less opportunity for a player to drop on the green side of a penalty area when a ball has last crossed on the tee side. Most penalty areas should therefore be marked as red to give players the additional option of lateral relief and make it easier for players to understand the relief options. You may therefore want to consider whether any existing water hazards, marked as yellow, 
should now, or could now, potentially be marked as red penalty areas. For example, the example above shows a typical water hazard marked in yellow. Stream is 30 yards short of the green. On this hole, it will be unlikely for a ball to spin or fall back into the penalty area from the green side. And even if it does, the benefit of dropping on the green side is minimal, if any. This would be perfectly acceptable to mark as red. But, where part of the challenge of the hole is to carry over a penalty area, then the committee may decide to continue to mark as yellow. For example, the 17th at Sawgrass. Next is new penalty areas. A committee may, from 2019, mark areas other than those containing water as penalty areas. In most cases, these will be areas that would be marked as red. These could include areas of dense gorse or jungle as we would refer to it. Some key considerations. Players must still have knowledge or virtual certainty that a ball is in a penalty area to be entitled to relief under the rule. There's also little point in marking lots of small areas as penalty areas. Committees should not define properties bordering the course as a penalty area where they would have normally been marked as out of bounds. You may also want to consider what challenge you or the architect wanted to pose the players when the course was designed. We encourage trying to treat similar areas the same. Also consider that a player who loses his or her ball outside of the penalty area will have a greater penalty than someone whose ball is in the penalty area. Also bear in mind that players cannot take unplayable relief from a penalty area, so a player will have to take their ball back to where they last crossed the edge of the penalty area, which should be a consideration from a pace of play point of view. It should also be noted that committees wishing to make fundamental changes to the playing of a hole may need to consult with the Club Department of Scottish Golf before making changes, as these may impact your course rating. Please also see the Advice to Committees Guide on the impacts of the new rules on the Congu website. Next is no play zones. Previously committees were only able to keep players out of a particular area by marking it as out of bounds or having a government agency declare the area an environmentally sensitive one. Going forward, a committee will have the authority to define abnormal ground conditions or penalty areas as no play zones, from which all play will be prohibited. Examples of areas which may be classed as no play zones are protecting players from danger, for example from a steep cliff, areas of heather or gorse regeneration, protecting an area of young trees or a re-turfed area. Remember that it is not mandatory to change or add any new course markings, markings but the new rules do give committees more scope to assist in the play of their golf course. Terms of the competition. All competitions, for example monthly medals or club opens, should have terms of the competition, formerly known as conditions of competition. We have found historically that clubs and their organising committees have not had these in place, which can potentially leave them open to challenge. These terms are required to provide structure to the competition and make it clear for all parties what is and is not permitted. For example, how to enter, who may enter, what tees will be used, what format will be used and how ties will be decided. This is one key change as the default for a match which ends in a half is now that extra holes must be played in order to find a winner. If a committee wants a match to end in a tie or the playoff method will be something other than a hole by hole playoff starting at the first, the committee must specify that in the terms of the competition. Local rules. Once the course markings have been determined and you have reviewed or created terms of the competition, you can now look at updating your local rules and your scorecards. The good news 
is that there is a full set of model local rules on the RNA website under Committee com Procedures and Toolkit. A number of changes will be required, such as using the new terminology, updated rule numbers and the removal of any unnecessary local rules, which have now been included in the new rules. Now let us go through some of the most common ones. Stones and bunkers. Players are now allowed to remove loose impediments in a bunker without penalty. As stones are loose impediments, the local rule is no longer required. Embedded ball through the green. Previously, a local rule was needed to allow relief for an embedded ball through the green. The rules will now allow relief for an embedded ball in the rough as well as in the fairway by default. This can now be reversed by local rule. The terminology change here, the term through the green was used to cover the rough and the fairway, but this will now be known as the general area, which we will cover later. Distance measuring devices. A player or players are now allowed to use a distance measuring device to get information on distance or direction, but not elevation changes. A local rule is permitted to reverse this permission and prohibit its use. Relief from a wrong green. Interference now includes stance. A local rule can deny relief for the area of intended stance. And also, as we've covered previously, the opposite margin for a red penalty area. Players no longer have the option of dropping within two club lengths of the opposite margin. We are now going to talk about pace of play, which is always a hot topic. And while there is no requirement to make changes to your pace of play provisions, the new rules should encourage players to play quicker and recommend that players play promptly throughout the round, including preparing for each shot and move promptly between holes. Play shots in no more than 40 seconds and be encouraged to play quicker than this. Play out of turn and stroke play when it's safe to do so and use ready golf. Above you'll see some of the principles of ready golf. For example, hit your shot first before helping someone search for their ball. Put out even if it means standing close to someone's line. Encourage shorter hitters to play first. Information on ready golf, if it is adopted, should be publicised on notice boards and promoted to players in the terms of conditions. A short video on Ready Golf will now follow this. John and I are out here today playing Ready Golf, a new fun, fast way of getting round the golf course, but always remember when it's safe and appropriate to do so without breaching etiquette laws. Basically, if you're ready to go ahead and play and in stroke play, you go ahead and do so. Yeah, you're right, Andrew. I mean, stroke play, you know, you know, ready golf is perfect, but match play, it's not really there. You know, different strategy altogether. So, Andrew, here we go, mate. Listen, John, there's been a group in front of us who've been holding us up all day. You hit a little bit further than me, so I'm going to go ahead and play because they're still within your range. Go for it, Andy. Looking good, mate, looking the part. Yeah, thanks very much. That's very kind of you. I keep an eye on that, John. John, I'm just going to go ahead and hit. He's further off the tee than me, but you can see he's over there looking for his ball in the bushes. I've got my glove on, I've got my yardage, so I'm just going to go ahead and play. And hopefully in the time it takes me to play the shot, he's found his ball. That way we move a little bit quicker. Well, we've talked a lot about what ready golf is, but what ready golf isn't is a breach of etiquette and a race. Come on, John, hold on. Well, not bad, but he's still outside me. Now, I don't really want to wait for him to go and find the rake, go back in there, rake the bunker. Technically speaking, it's him to play. He's going to have to bring his bag up, drop his bag at the side of the green, come in, mark his ball, clean his ball. I'm ready. I've lined it up. I just want to go ahead and putt. In your own time, John.
All right, I've come up just a little bit shy. John's turn to go, but I'm just going to go ahead and put out. You don't mind, John, do you? No, crack on, mate. Just to keep the flow of this game going, you can't believe how many people now have stopped, marked the ball, and just take forever to get on. It's just a wee process of keeping the ball moving. For more information, you can check out the Pace of Play manual or on the RNA website at rna.org. Code of Conduct. Under the new rules, committees are also permitted to adopt a code of conduct that sets the standards for how players should conduct themselves, as well as outlines the penalties for breaching them. These can include failure to maintain the course, abuse of equipment, and use of inappropriate language. Penalties that can be applied can range from warnings through to one stroke or general penalties, or for serious breaches, disqualification. As we have touched upon, some changes may potentially have congu and handicapping implications. Before making any substantial changes to your course, for example, changing the colour of a penalty area which will materially affect the hole, or introducing a red penalty area containing no water, or a no play zone, you will need to advise your handicapping authority before doing so as it will likely impact your course rating. You will probably have heard of the new local rule option called alternative to stroke and distance. You should be aware that Congu have ruled that the inclusion of this local rule would make any event non-qualifying for handicap purposes. There is also a new rule, an additional form of stroke play called maximum score. This rule allows a committee to set a maximum score. Congo have identified for qualifying competitions, this is five over par. This is hopefully an option to help speed up pace of play of stroke play competitions and offer, or potentially offer, an open up stroke play format to golfers who currently only play Stableford competitions. 2019 is going to be a very significant year in rules evolution, with changes in the rules that result from the RNA and USGA Rules Modernisation Initiative, with the aim of bringing the rules up to date and fit to the needs of today's global game. The overall goals of the modernised rules are to be easily understood and applied by all golfers, be simple, consistent and fair, Use a consistent approach for similar situations. Support good pace of play. This section of the presentation will cover four topics. Using the new rulebook, new terminology, areas of the course and new principles. These are designed to give you an overview of the key changes in 2019. The new rulebook is broken down into sections as displayed, which should make it easier as there are now only 24 instead of 34 rules. There is also a guide how to use the rulebook on page 15 of the player's edition of the Rules of Golf. The index at the back of the book can also help you to identify quickly the rule that is relevant to your situation. For example, if you accidentally move your ball on the putting green, identify the key words in the question such as ball moved or putting green. The relevant rules can be found under the headings ball moved and putting green in the index. It's also advisable to get to know the definitions as these are the foundations that the rules are written on. If you do have to make a decision on an incident, then you need to understand the facts of the case. The form of play, are you playing match play or stroke play? Is it single, foursome or four ball? Who is involved? Does the question involve you, your partner or caddy, your opponent or his or her caddy, or an outside influence? On what part of the course did the incident occur? Was it in a bunker, in a penalty area 
on the putting green, etc. And what actually happened? Now having covered how to use the rulebook, let us look at some of the ways the language has changed, being deliberately written in a more modern way, using common words, shorter sentences and headings that explain the rules. If we look at the slide, you can see the old terminology on the left and the new on the right. Through the green has been replaced by the general area. The teeing ground is now the teeing area. Water and lateral hazards are now yellow and red penalty areas. Wrong putting green is now just wrong green. Outside agency is now outside influence. Abnormal ground condition is now abno abnormal course condition. Casual water is now temporary water. Play prohibited environmentally sensitive area is now no play zone and nearest point of relief is nearest point of complete relief. Another thing you'll notice in the rulebook is the end of male only references and also the use of the phrase general penalty rather than constant repetition of either a two stroke penalty in stroke play or loss of hole in match play. Now we look at the rules changes that affect specific areas of the course. The golf course is now split into five distinct sections. The teeing area, bunkers, penalty areas, putting green, with the remainder of the course being identified as the general area. Different rules and relief options now apply dependent on what part of the course the ball, ball lies. Rule 2.2c determines where a player's ball lies, as a ball is always treated as lying in only one area of the course. If part of the ball is both in the general area and one of the four specific areas, it is treated as lying in the specific area of the course. If part of the ball lies in two specific areas of the course, it is treated as lying in, that, in the area that comes first in this order. Penalty area, bunker, putting green. Next we will cover some key principles that have been introduced to use a consistent approach for similar situations and provide fairer outcomes whenever you're on the golf course. Players will continue to drop a ball when taking relief under many different rules but the drop-in procedure has changed in several ways. The first new concept is the reference point. When dropping a ball, a player must now have a reference point. This is the spot from which they may measure the area in which to drop. Recommended point that, that this point is marked with a T-peg or some other small object. No penalty if the reference point is not marked, but without a defined mark, it can make the whole drop-in procedure more complicated. Directly linked to this is the new concept of the relief area. This is the area a player must drop a ball when taking relief. It is also the area where a ball must come to rest when taking relief. Ball must be redropped if it comes to rest outside this relief area. The whole issue of whether a ball has rolled a further two lengths and still be in play is no longer relevant. The dropped ball must stay in the relief area. It is hoped that these changes both standardise the process of taking relief and makes the dropping and redropping process more easily understood. Still within the context of dropping, the club length has now been defined and can be found in the back of the rulebook in the definitions. This is a direct impact on establishing the size of the player's relief area. It is now defined as the longest club in your bag, except the putter. As a driver is likely to be most people's longest club in the bag, 
This club will be the only one that determines the size of the relief area, even though another club may physically be used to measure. We would therefore recommend best practice that always use the longest club when measuring to avoid any problems of more accurately identifying whether a ball has come to rest correctly within the relief area. Completing the drop-in procedure is the change in the rules that everyone is likely to have heard about, dropping the ball from knee height. How a ball is to be dropped is simplified. The only requirement is that the ball be let go from knee height and does not touch any part of the player's body or equipment before it hits the ground. The ball must be dropped within and come to rest within the specific relief area set by the rule under which you are taking relief and will be within one or two club lengths of the reference point. No redrop is required if it accidentally hits a person or object after hitting the ground but before coming to rest in the relief area. Dropped a ball second time if it comes to rest outside the relief area. If this happens again, it is placed where it first touched the ground on the second drop. The RNA considered various heights but decided on knee height, as this, the lower height increases the chance, chances of the ball staying within the relief area. Dropping rather than placing retains a desired randomness to where the ball comes to rest, so not always guaranteeing a good lie, and probably results to fewer plugged balls when dropping balls in bunkers. Now some changes that are linked to searching for and identifying your ball. The underlying principles of these changes are to have a positive impact on pace of play, make the rules simple and practical to apply, bring consistency to the, the approach of trusting the player. The first change is the time allowed for searching for a ball before it becomes lost has been reduced from five minutes to three minutes. Studies have found that balls are generally found within three minutes. It's also hoped that this change will encourage more players to play provisional balls, which if not done, generally loses even more time. The second change is if a player accidentally moves their ball while searching for it, there is no longer a penalty. The ball will always be replaced, even if the exact spot is not known. The original spot will simply need to be estimated. One reason for this change is the belief that the rules should help the player find his or her ball within a reasonable length of time and not penalise them when they do. The final change we will cover in this section is a player may mark and lift a ball, for example, to identify it or to see if it is unfit for play, without first needing to announce this intention to another person. If, however, this was done for no good reason, the player would incur a penalty of one stroke. The following changes are all designed to make situations encountered on the golf course less confusing and not lead to unnecessary penalties. Under Rule 14.3, whenever a player must drop a ball in taking relief, either under penalty or free relief, they will always be allowed the choice to substitute a ball or use the original ball. Put simply, substitution will be allowed whenever a player takes relief under any rule when the next stroke must or may be played from somewhere other than where the ball came to rest. Substitution will not be allowed when the rules require the ball to be replaced on its original spot. This should clear up any confusion around whether or when a substitution can take place. The rules now treat all accidental accidental deflections the same, no matter who or what caused them. Rule 10.1a covers fairly striking the ball, but if you have a tendency to hit the ball more than once, the good news is that you no longer incur a one-stroke penalty and the ball is simply played as it lies. Under Rule 4.1a, a player will now be allowed to continue using any club that has da been damaged during a round no matter how it has been damaged, even if in anger.
An existing decision has been brought into the rules to ensure that players will not be penalised if they make reasonable judgment when estimating or measuring a spot, line, point, area or other location on the golf course. Therefore, if the player did all that could be reasonably expected in the circumstances to make a prompt and accurate estimation or measurement, this judgment will be upheld, even if it is later shown to be wrong by another confirmation. Even if an advantage is gained, the player will get no penalty for small inaccuracies or even if the estimation was significantly wrong, but there is no way of doing a better job. The rules will also reverse the current default position on distance measuring devices so that players will now be allowed to use distance measuring devices. Therefore, a local rule is no longer required. Instead, committees can now introduce a local rule to prohibit the use of DMDs. DMDs have become widespread and are used globally, so it makes sense to reverse the default position as they have also proved to assist pace of play. The rules have made a couple of changes that focus on the caddy. Once the player begins taking a stance for the stroke until the stroke is made, the player's caddy must not deliberately stand on or close to an extension of the line of play behind the ball. Now to areas of the course. The teeing area is the area where players must play from in starting play of a hole, and it is a rectangle that is two club lengths deep. Remember, defined as the longest club in your bag. Defined by the outer limits of the tee markers. Other tee locations, including others on the same hole, are deemed part of the general area. Tee markers are deemed fixed whenever playing from a teeing area, otherwise they are movable obstructions. The next area of the course is the general area. The general area is the area of the course that covers all of the course except these four defined areas. The teeing area of the hole being played, all penalty areas, all bunkers and the putting green of the hole being played. It also includes all other teeing locations on the course and all wrong greens. Similar to the new distance measure and device rule, the default position for relief for an embedded ball will now be reversed under rule 16.3. Relief will now be allowed for a ball embedded anywhere, except when embedded in sand, in the general area, what was known as through the green, without the need for a local rule. A committee can restrict embedded ball for parts of the general area cut to fairway height or less by introducing a local rule. A ball is considered embedded when part of the ball is below the level of the ground, as the picture shows. This is a good example of a graphic from the decisions book, having now been moved to the rule book to make the rules more easily understood. In terms of actually taking relief for an embedded ball, we must now refer to what we know from the new dropping procedure. First, establish a reference point. This is now clarified as being the spot immediately behind the ball. Then we measure our relief area using our longest club, but not the putter, and measure one club length. Then we drop a ball from knee height within the relief area, not nearer the hole than the reference point. If the ball hits my ankle on the way down before touching the ground, we cancel the drop and we do it again. The ball comes to rest in the relief area and off we go. This is a great example of a rule change that creates consistency, as before we had to drop it as close to the spot of the embedded ball as possible. And with reference point now being the spot right behind the ball, this avoids the question of what to do when a ball rolls back into the same pitch mark. This can no longer happen. Now we we'll look at abnormal course conditions. These are defined as the following. An animal hole, ground under repair, 
an immovable obstruction or temporary water. Abnormal course conditions also now include a hole dug by an animal, not just burrowing. Relief is available except when the condition is out of bounds or the ball lies within a penalty area. So looking at this slide, a section of the general area has been, de been defined as ground under repair, defined by the committee. As before, we first establish a reference point. This is classed as being the nearest point of complete relief within the general area. Then we measure our one club length relief area. We then drop a ball from knee height within the relief area, which must be in the general area, not nearer the hole than the reference point and must provide complete relief from all interference from the ground under repair. The ball comes to rest in the relief area and off we go. If a ball is lost in ground under repair, it must be known or virtually certain, which is now defined as 95% likely. The reference point for relief would then be estimated as the point where the ball last crossed the ground under repair. An identical procedure now applies to immovable obstructions as they are categorised as abnormal course conditions. Remember the reference point is the nearest point of complete relief and not the nicest point of relief, so it may take you into the rough, not always on the fairway side. There are a couple of examples on the slide. Nearest point of complete relief is established for B1, a ball on abnormal course condition, such as a cart path. This is the point nearest to the ball's original spot, but not near the hole than that spot, which is position one. For ball two, the player is standing on the abnormal condition, so has interference. Position two is the nearest point to where the ball lay that allows the player complete relief from the condition. The other side would be further away. Now we'll have a look at the unplayable ball rule. The change in the rules here is, so, is to predominantly introduce you to the new terminology associated with a player's relief options. We have stroke and distance relief, where the reference point is the spot where the previous stroke was made which if not known must be estimated and ball dropped within one club length of that spot. Back on the line relief, the reference point for the one club length relief area is a spot on the course keeping where the ball lay in line with the flagstick with no limit as to how far back you can go. Lateral relief, reference point for the two club lengths relief area is the spot of the original ball. This diagram illustrates unplayable ball relief options when a ball lies in a bunker. The player can take relief under any of the three options, one, two and three, as shown. Stroke and distance, back where the player last played. One shot penalty, as before. Number two, if dropping back on the line, ball must be dropped in the bunker for one shot penalty, as before. And number three, if lateral relief, ball must be dropped in the bunker under one shot penalty as before. But as an extra relief option new for 2019, when a ball is in a bunker, a player can now choose to take back on the line relief outside the bunker for a total penalty of two strokes, which could really help players who struggle to get out of bunkers. Another area defined in 2019 is bunkers, which will be given their very own rule number. With that comes some big changes as to what players can do. Under Rule 12, players will now be permitted to touch or move loose impediments in a bunker, such as stones, leaves, twigs, pine cones. However, it would still be a one-stroke penalty if in removing the loose impediment the ball moved, and the ball must be replaced. Players will also generally be allowed to touch the sand, 
with a hand or club, with some exceptions, such as prohibiting testing the condition of the sand or touching the sand whilst preparing for the stroke, touching the sand with their club in front of or behind their ball, by taking practice swings or in the backward movement of the club. Also worth noting, the definition on bunker has changed to now exclude the wall or lip of the bunker, consisting of soil, grass, etc., as not being part of the bunker, the same as stacked turf face of a bunker. So if in the backswing a player touches the wall or lip of the bunker, there is now no penalty. A look now at an abnormal course condition in a bunker, such as temporary water, from Fritt from which we need to take relief. The nearest point of complete relief, free relief, must be within the bunker. If there is no nearest point of complete relief in the bunker, the player may find, find the point of maximum available relief and this becomes the reference point for the relief area. Alternatively, if the player does not want to play from the bunker, there is still the option of dropping back on the line outside the bunker under penalty of one stroke. The next area we'll look at is the putting green. Under Rule 13.2, improvements on the putting green are now permitted, which means almost any damage on the green can be repaired. Damage is defined to include all types of damage caused by a person or outside influence, such as ball marks, spike mark damage, indentation from a club or flag stick, animal damage, and even embedded objects. What is not allowed, however, is repair of natural imperfections, damage caused by normal mainten maintenance practices, such as aeration holes, verticutting, or natural wear of the hole. It should be noted that aeration holes can still be added as a local rule and area of poor ground can of course be marked as ground under repair. Damage can be repaired by the player's hand, foot or other part of the body. A pitch mark repairer, tee or other similar item of normal equipment but must not unreasonably delay play the philosophy for this change is that the putting green should be a smooth surface for rolling your ball. So this rule change honours that and means there will be less dubiety when trying to decide what is a ball mark. Continuing with the putting green and to emphasise speed of play, players will now have the choice of putting with a flag stick in the hole, having it attended or having it removed. If the player decides to leave the flag stick in the hole, there will be no penalty if a ball played from the putting green hits it. This will be particularly help long putts when no one is near the hole to attend the flags, and maybe even for simple tap-ins. In another change under Rule 13.2c, a ball is treated as hold if it rests against the flag stick and any part of the ball is below the surface of the putting green, as in the picture shown. So no longer does the hole of the ball need to be below the surface when resting against the flag stick. Intuitive changes like this will prevent a vast number of penalties and disqualifications when a player picks up their ball thinking it had been holed and fails to hole out. Still on the putting green, where there have been some significant changes, there will now be no penalty to anyone, including the player, their opponent, or any other player, if a ball or ball marker is accidentally moved. The ball is simply replaced as long as the movement occurs on the putting green itself. This removes the need for the additional local rule that many committees introduced in 2017. Also under the same rule, 13.1d, there is a change when a ball on the putting green is moved by natural forces, such as wind or gravity. If the ball has been lifted and replaced on its spot, 
regardless of what caused the ball to move, the, mo the ball must always be replaced. This rule may also be useful in particularly high winds, as it may allow play to continue when it might otherwise have been unfair or difficult to do so. Should be noted, however, that this rule won't help a player if they had not lifted the ball first. In this case, if the ball moves by natural forces, it would be played from its new position. The rules now give additional authority to a caddy under Rule 14.1. They are allowed to mark and lift the player's ball on the putting green any time the player is allowed to do so, without needing authorisation each time. They will continue to be allowed to replace the player's ball if it was them who lifted or moved the ball. The other big change for caddies and for partners of the player is being able to point out and touch the line of play rather than line of putt on the putting green. This is consistent with the rules permitting touching the putting green to repair any damage provided no object is placed to show the line of play. This slide shows a wrong green. This, while a small change within the rules, makes things more consistent when it comes to taking relief. It is also another terminology change. Relief from a wrong green, not a wrong putting green. It is now part of the general area, so not classed as an area no, now known as the putting green. Now interference is not just if the ball touches a wrong green, but if the wrong green affects the player's area of intended stance or swing. So the relief procedure is consistent with that of an abnormal course condition. The final area of the course to discuss is what used to be called water hazards and now called penalty areas. There will be yellow penalty areas and red penalty areas and committees have the discretion to mark any penalty areas as red so that lateral relief will always be allowed. The other major change to penalty areas is that a player can now touch or move loose impediments, touch the ground with a hand or club, take practice swings, basically everything that you can do in the general area. This should be much easier for players to understand should avoid unnecessary penalties and assist with pace of play. This example shows penalty area relief options when marked as a yellow penalty area. There is no change to the rules here in a yellow penalty area in how to apply the rules. If the, the ball can't be found, it must be known or virtually certain, 95% likely, that the ball came to rest in the penalty area. The ball is played from point one and crosses into the water at point X. The player has the option to go back to where he or she last played under stroke and distance from point one under penalty of one stroke. The player has the option to take back on the line relief player must choose a reference point back on the line and drop the ball within a club length of 0.2 under penalty of one stroke. Remember, if a player's ball lies in a penalty area and they have interference from an abnormal course condition, an embedded ball, there are no relief options other than under Rule 17 and penalty of one stroke. This example shows penalty area relief options when marked as a red penalty area. Ball is played from point one and crosses into the water at point X. Player has the option to go back to where he or she last played at point one under stroke and dis distance under a penalty of one stroke. Player has the option to go take back on the line relief Player selects a reference point back on the line and drop the ball within a club length of 0.2 under penalty of one stroke. 
player has the option to take lateral relief, the player must drop a ball within two club, club lengths a point X under penalty of one stroke. Remember, there is now no option to take opposite margin relief under the new rules. When dropping your ball under the new rules, the likelihood you will need only one drop will increase, while the randomness of your resulting lie will be preserved. The procedure is simple. Hold the ball at knee height, let go of it so it falls straight down, and make sure that it lands and comes to rest in the relief area. Don't throw, roll or spin the ball, and don't let it hit you as it falls. When you drop in relief areas defined by one or two club lengths in the 2019 rules, a club length will always mean the length of the longest club in your bag, except your putter. For most players, that club will be their driver, but not always. This player is using his driver to measure his two club length lateral relief area outside a red penalty area. This player's back on the line relief area is one club length on either side of and behind the point he has chosen on the line from the hole through where his ball was unplayable in the bunker. He is estimating the size of his relief area without measuring, then dropping well within one club length of that point. Finally, when a player measures with a shorter club, it is still the longest club in their bag, except the putter, that defines the relief area. Remember, when you drop, your ball must always land in, come to rest in and be played from the relief area. In the 2019 rules, when dropping and taking free relief or penalty relief, your ball must be dropped in the defined relief area and it must come to rest in there too. Most of the time, with the knee height dropping procedure, that will happen on your first drop. When it doesn't, drop a second time. If the drop doesn't stay within the relief area either, place a ball where your second drop first touched the ground. When taking relief from a penalty area for one penalty stroke, one of your relief options in the 2019 rules is going back on the line. Follow these steps. Estimate the point on the edge of the penalty area where your ball last crossed as it went in. Imagine a straight line running from the hole through that estimated point and extending behind the penalty area. Go as far back as you like and identify a spot on that line. Measure or estimate a one club length wide relief area on either side of and behind that spot. In the 2019 rules, a club length is always the longest club in your bag, except your putter. Then drop a ball in the relief area. Your drop ball must land in and be played from the relief area. In the 2019 rules, when you take lateral relief from a red penalty area under a one-stroke penalty, estimate the point on the edge of the penalty area where your ball last crossed as it went in. Starting at that point, measure or estimate your two club lengths relief area outside the penalty area that is not near the hole. In the 2019 rules, club lengths are the length of the longest club in your bag, except your putter. And then drop a ball in that area. Your drop ball must land in and come to rest in the relief area. When the 2019 rules let you lift your ball to take relief instead of playing it as it lies, you will be allowed to either use your original ball or substitute and use a different ball. In the 2019 rules, you are allowed to substitute a ball when taking free relief as well as when taking penalty relief. This player is substituting a ball when taking free relief from a cart path.
other than when your ball is on the putting green, if you take an action near your ball and cause it to move, you get a one-stroke penalty under the 2019 rules. However, you are only responsible for causing a ball to move if it is known or virtually certain that you did so. This means when it is 95% or more likely that you caused it to move. For this player, it is not virtually certain that his actions caused the ball to move. Therefore, the ball is treated as moved by natural forces and played from the new location. Under the 2019 rules, there is no penalty if you accidentally move your ball while searching for it. If you do, replace your ball back on its original spot. If you don't know the original spot exactly, like this player, simply estimate it, including how the ball was lying under the grass, and replace the ball there. After playing his shot, this player notices another ball and lifts it. Almost immediately, a player on another hole advises him that the lifted ball could be hers. In such cases, if your ball is moved or lifted by someone else, it must be replaced either by you or that person. This is done by simply replacing that ball on the spot it was lifted or moved from. If that spot isn't exactly known, as in this case, simply estimate it and replace the ball there. After each stroke you make on a hole, you are supposed to find and play that same ball. Most of the time, it is possible to identify your ball without lifting it, but occasionally you need to lift it to do so. Under the 2019 rules, you are not required to announce that you intend to lift your ball to identify it. But before you lift a ball to identify it, you need to mark its position, and you are not allowed to clean the ball any more than needed to identify it. If the ball is yours, you will put it back in the same place where you lifted it. The 2019 rules allow you to repair almost any damage on the putting green. In addition to ball marks and old hole plugs, you're allowed to repair spike marks and any other damage caused by shoes, repair animal damage, and repair damage caused by maintenance practices. The fixing and repair of the putting green must be done promptly and must not improve your line of play beyond the repair of the damage. Under the 2019 rules, when you're assessing the line for your putt, there will be no penalty if your caddy or partner touches the putting green to point out where you should aim or how your putt will break. This includes touching the green with the flagstick. Under the 2019 rules, if you accidentally move your ball or ball marker on the putting green, there is no penalty. For example, if you accidentally move your ball in making a practice swing or in preparing for your stroke, drop your ball marker on your ball and move it, move your ball with your foot, or cause your ball marker to move. There is no penalty and you simply replace your ball or ball marker on its original spot. After you mark, lift and then replace your ball on the putting green, if it moves for any reason, including through your own accidental actions, or for some other reason, such as the wind, always replace your ball back on its original spot. If you don't know the exact spot, estimate it as accurately as you can and replace the ball there. Under 
under the 2019 rules, there is no penalty for hitting the flagstick that is in the hole when you've played your stroke from off the putting green or if you've played your stroke from on the green. So, if you want to leave the flagstick in the hole, perhaps to save time or because you think it helps you, there is no penalty if your ball hits it. If your ball is not holed, play it as it lies. Under the 2019 rules, when your ball is on the putting green, your caddy is allowed to mark, lift and clean it with or without your approval. If your caddy has marked and lifted your ball, it can be replaced by either you or your caddy. In the 2019 rules, areas with red or yellow markings most golfers call water hazards have a new name, penalty areas. Penalty areas can also include other places on the course not containing water, where balls are frequently not found or not playable, such as jungles, deserts, canyons and more. If you lose your ball in a penalty area or find it and decide not to play it, you have several options to take relief outside it for one penalty stroke. One of them is lateral relief. Estimate where your ball crossed the red line as it went into the penalty area. Measure or estimate your two club lengths lateral relief area outside the penalty area that is not near the hole. Then, drop a ball in the relief area and play it from there. The 2019 rules introduce the term penalty area, which includes areas previously known as water hazards. If you find your ball in a penalty area and want to play it from there, the same rules apply as when playing a ball from the fairway or the rough. So before making a stroke, you're allowed to move loose impediments, make practice swings that touch the ground or any water inside the penalty area, and grind your club near your ball. Under the 2019 rules, there is no penalty for moving loose impediments when your ball is in a bunker. However, some bunker restrictions continue to exist. For example, you are still not allowed to touch the sand with your club, behind or in front of your ball, when making a practice swing, or when making your backswing. When you decide your ball in a bunker is unplayable, under the 2019 rules you have an extra option that lets you drop back on the line outside the bunker for a penalty of two strokes. Imagine a straight line running from the hole through where your unplayable ball is. Identify a spot on that line as far behind the bunker as you like. Measure or estimate a one club length wide relief area on either side of and behind that spot. Then drop a ball in that area. Your drop ball must land in and be played from the relief area. The rules permit you to freely exchange advice with your caddy or partner, but you are required to act alone when making a stroke. Under the 2019 rules, once you start taking your stance for a stroke, Neither your caddy nor partner are allowed to stand behind you. It is important that you are aware of how your pace of play impacts others. The 2019 rules encourage prompt pace of play by all players by recommending that you play promptly throughout the round, such as by preparing in advance for each stroke moving at a good pace between strokes and between holes, and that you make a stroke in no more than 40 seconds. The 2019 rules also expressly allow for you to agree to play out of turn 
in a safe and responsible way to save time or for convenience. This is often referred to as ready golf. The order of play when starting a hole depends on who has the honour. After that, it is based on which ball is farthest from the hole. In stroke play, however, there is no penalty for playing out of turn. And the 2019 rules both allow and encourage you to play ready golf, which means to play in a safe and responsible order that is most convenient and that saves time. These players agreed to play out of turn because the player farther from the hole had a difficult shot and the other player was ready to play. The 2019 rules include a new form of stroke play called maximum score. Under this alternative form of play, a maximum number of strokes are set to cap a player's score on each hole. Examples of maximums are net double bogey, two times par, or a fixed number such as a six, eight, or 10 strokes. This means if you pick up your ball without finishing a hole, you get the maximum score for that hole. No more, guys. To help pace of play, you are encouraged to stop playing a hole when you reach the maximum, or you realise a score of less than the maximum will not be possible. As you can see, there are lots of rules resources available on www.rnda.org now and more will become available over the coming weeks and months to help you and your members familiarise yourselves with the new rules of golf.